the time. And likewise, gun controls don't violate the Second Amendment if they are constructed so they don't violate the rights of law-abiding citizens and they actually do something constructive, significant, and effective to protect law-abiding citizens. Captain Kelly talked about the matrix of failure. Twenty years ago, I testified b before this committee, some of the senators are, are still here, about one thing that turned out to be part of that matrix of failure, and that was the ban on so-called assault weapons. I warned during that testimony then that it was based not on the function of guns or how fast they fired or how powerful they were, but on superficial cosmetic uh, characteristics and accessories. As part of the compromise that eventually led to that bill being mistakenly passed by Congress, the bill had a 10-year sunset in it and a requirement that the Department of Justice supervise a study of the effectiveness of that law. That study was, uh, the people to carry out that study were chosen by Attorney General Reno's Department of Justice. They did several interim studies and then a final study, and they concluded that the law had done nothing. It had not saved lives. It had not reduced the number of bullets that were fired in crimes. It had been a failure. It had, to some minor degree, switched the types of guns that were used in crimes. So you had a gun with one name instead of another name, but it didn't say it didn't reduce crime overall. And indeed, it was a dangerous bill in the sense that so much political attention was distracted by the focus on this that it took public attention away from debate on measures that might have been more constructive and life-saving. Today, police and law-abiding citizens choose semi-automatic handguns and rifles such as the AR-15 for the same reason. They are often the best choice for the lawful defense of self and others. To assert that such firearms and their standard capacity factory magazines are only meant for mass murder is truly to libel law-abiding citizens and the many law enforcement officers who choose these guns not for hunting, not for collecting, but for the purpose for which police officers always carry firearms for the lawful defense of self and others.